I'm looking forward to this one. Um, Mark and Ivor, very, very warm welcome. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, so this is indeed the introduction of the Archimate 3.0 standard. Um, this is just one presentation on Archimate this week, or uh, today even. Uh, it'll be a, a, an overview presentation. It won't get, go into the details of the Archimate standard, but there will be several presentations later today. There's an extensive one on, uh, uh, in the Archimate track that really covers all the details of the new version of the standard. Uh, and there's also a specific presentation going to be on capability-based planning, which is also a hot topic, of course. Uh, so more on Archimate later on, but in this presentation, we just want to introduce the new version of the standard to you and show you a practical use case uh, from the healthcare uh, world that shows you how to, how to use some of these concepts. I think this was already introduced. I can just skip that. Um, the contents of our presentation um, we're going to briefly introduce Archimate to you. It's not going to give you an overview of what the language is, so if you're not familiar with Archimate, well, I wouldn't worry, but it's not going to give you a, a full overview of the language. But we're just going to zoom in on specific highlights and show a, a use case uh, that shows you how to, to use these concepts in practice. But first, let's, let's look at why we developed Archimate in the first place. Uh, Archimate as a language was really addressing the, the, the problem over here, that you have pictures that you only understand if you ask the architect what they mean. And I think this is a worst case scenario where the picture doesn't mean anything. Um, but you really need to have some kind of standard to understand what the architectures uh, actually mean. But there's more to it than that. It's not just a picture. Architecture models uh, are much more specific than just having a, a drawing. So Archimate as a standard provides more than just a notation for uh, drawing up architecture diagrams. It's really a language. It's a language with concepts for expressing architectures. And that language can be uh, denoted in an, uh, a standardized notation. Uh, but Archimate also has a vision on how to visualize architectures for others. It doesn't provide you with all the different kinds of visualizations you might need for different stakeholder groups, but it does have this vision behind the language that you should be able to visualize the same concepts in different ways for different stakeholders. So that's one of the, the elements of Archimate as well. So it's not just its own graphical notation, but it's also really about visualization. The language has its own framework, its, its structure, and the word framework is, of course, very ambiguous. TOGAF is a framework, the F uh, of TOGAF, of course. The Zachman framework is a framework. Archimate has its own framework, but it's really intended to structure the language. Um, and of course, well, finally, it's an open standard by the open group. Um, if we look at how you position Archimate as a standard, it's really in between different worlds. It's in between the higher level strategic world of sort of informal models. They're less, less precise and less formalized at this level than what you find in Archimate itself. Things like your business model canvas, your uh, balanced scorecard, etc. Down below you, you will see the detailed design and implementation models like UML or BPMN. Those are very detailed, very precise, intended to be uh, executed or, or built in practice. Archimate is in between. Archimate is not as detailed and precise as what you find down below. But it is more concrete, more precise than what you find at the strategic level. And there's another aspect to Archimate where it bridges uh, different areas of the organization because its scope is broader than, for example, just software or just business processes or just strategy. It ties together different areas. So there's also a horizontal connection between these different domains. So Archimate can connect between the, say, the software implementation and the business process world, uh, whereas BPMN and UML cannot do that because they don't have the concepts for that. You can't connect a UML model directly to a BPMN model, but Archimate can bridge that gap. So why did we develop this new version of Archimate, uh, version 3 that we're now at? Um, well, first of all, we see an increasing demand to connect enterprise architecture to business strategy. And I think the previous two talks of, of this morning already addressed that. Business architecture is, uh, I would say it's a sub-discipline of enterprise architecture. Others would argue that it's something different, but uh, I would say it's, it's really uh, closely related. And it needs to connect to business strategy, and we need the right concepts for doing that. So Archimate has been extended in that area. There's another reason we extended Archimate, and that's that we see an increasing connection between the IT world and the physical world. We see all kinds of technology innovations like the Internet of Things, uh, the case that Ivor is going to present will really make use of those concepts. 
uh, that connect these two worlds. But we also see Archimate being used in other domains than the traditional world of large uh, information intensive organizations where enterprise architecture grew up and Archimate as well. Um, so that was also an important reason. Um, and then we see that Archimate uh, also uh, had some issues uh, of consistency, different definitions that were not really well aligned, some, some smaller stuff that we wanted to improve as well. Um, and finally, the, uh, the Open Group has a, a number of standards, and especially TOGAF is, of course, very important in, in this context. And over the last year, year and a half, there was a specific project called Harmony, looking at harmonization of the definitions in different standards. And the output of that project was also taken into account in developing this new version of Archimate. So various reasons to develop this new version. Um, much more detail about that later on today, but I will zoom in on a few examples of that in my, in my talk. But first, a bit about the reason for uh, uh, develop, uh, developing Archimate, because it's, it's really used in different uh, domains nowadays. If you look at this, the industry usage, and this is a poll I did last year in the LinkedIn group on Archimate, we started Archimate as a language for mainly for, let's say, government and finance and the typical organizations that have their primary process embedded in the IT. But we do see an increased usage in domains like healthcare and retail and manufacturing. And uh, so those areas where they are really in the physical world and not just in the IT world are really picking up, I, I think, enterprise architecture in general and Archimate uh, as well. So those are main reasons to extend Archimate with concepts uh, like that. Okay, um, just to give you a bit of background on Archimate and Archimate structure, I'll, I'll, I'll talk you through the Archimate framework to, to, so that you understand what the different areas are that the language covers. And Archimate started as a language um, when we developed it in a, in a Dutch R&D project together with a number of uh, user organizations like, well, the ABN Amro Bank and the Dutch Tax Administration, etc. Um, and we started with a language that reflected the structure of natural language, human languages. And, all human languages have subjects, verbs, and objects. The order might be different, the, the grammar of the language decides on that, but subjects, verbs, and objects are central to the structure of Archimate. You see that we have the active structure in Archimate, which are the subjects of the sentence, so in this case, John, uh, an actor, if you recognize the symbol, a business actor. Then we have the behavior, the verbs. What, what is John doing? Well, John reads. And what is he reading? He reads a book, the, the object of the sentence. This is the central structure of the entire language. Of course, when you then look at architecture practice, you see that this is often applied at different areas, domains, layers uh, of, uh, of the organization. So the next uh, addition we made was layering this according to what we saw in many architecture practices. And, and TOGAV is one of them. Uh, TOGAV has the same three layers, although they call the application layer the information systems layer, but it is aligned with what's in there. So this was Archimate version one. This was the version developed initially. So that covered this, this core area of what the, uh, the enterprise actually does. But this wasn't complete because if you look at, the, if you look at TOGAF at the ADM, what's, what's missing there is, first of all, the motivation behind the architecture. You can describe how it operates, but what were, what were the reasons behind that? The, your architecture principles, your goals, your stakeholders. So, the motivation aspect is an important aspect that was added there as well. It's not layered like the rest because you, you uh, apply this motivation across the entire architecture. You don't have specific motivation just for the business layer, for example. And the second addition was in the implementation and migration of the architecture. It's nice to describe how the world looks or how it should look in, in the future, but you also need the right concepts to uh, describe how you get there. A concept like uh, plateau, the stable stage of the architecture development. A work package, the work that you need to do to implement a part of your architecture. This is subdivided in the same way that we saw in the, in the other layers because we have the same kind of things there. A work package is typical behavior, uh, so that would be in the middle column. Um, passive structure, a deliverable of a work package would typically be in the passive structure. So this was Archimate version 2. This was where we started when we started developing version 3. And like I said at the beginning, we saw two main areas where we wanted to extend the language. And first of all, that's in strategy. So we have a few concepts added to describe strategic issues. Um, and I'll, I'll uh, talk you through some of those later on. And we added some concepts for the physical world. 
And if you look closely, you see that in, in this picture, the physical layer is really tied to the technology layer. We didn't put a separate layer in there. We linked it to the existing technology concepts because we saw that this integration between physical and IT technology is becoming more and more important. So describing that as an integrated whole is very uh, central to the new additions. And I think Ivor will show examples of that as well. So that's Archimate version 3. Of course, there are many other examples and uh, many other improvements to the language, and I will show some of those as well, um, because it's not just adding a few concepts. There are other uh, additions to the language, improvements, changes that uh, help you apply it in practice. So I'll just walk you through some of the highlights. This afternoon, I will provide much more detail on what's new in the language. I will show many examples, but just to give you some impression of what's, what's in there. So first of all, we added uh, a number of strategy elements, a number of concepts for describing strategy, um, things like capability-based planning. They are really aligned with what we saw in other approaches, like the BizBog, which was already mentioned this morning, the business motivation model, TOGAF, of course, uh, the new uh, OBA standard. Um, so that's an important addition uh, at the strategic level. We are working on a white paper on capability-based planning. Um, the session this afternoon will tell you more about that. So this is an important addition. And just to give you some uh, feeling for what we have there, here we see a rather, well, uh, it's, it's a simple picture, but it might look complicated if you're not familiar with Archimate. What we see here is uh, two existing concepts, driver and goal. This is already in Archimate version two. So the driver of the organization is profitability. And to reach that, there are certain goals that have a positive influence on each other. But to realize these goals, you need outcomes. And outcome is one new concept in Archimate. And an outcome is distinct from a goal because some outcomes m might not be your goals, might not be desirable, might, might even be undesirable. So the outcome is the actual result. And the goal is what you want to achieve. So outcome is a really new concept. And if you look at the symbol, it's, it looks a bit like a goal. Uh, but it's, it's the same uh, bulls well, it's, it's with a dart stuck in the bullseye. It's the same symbol as for a goal this target, but with uh, really the outcome achieved by having the dart in the bullseye. Next to that, we added some other concepts. First of all, we have the concept called course of action. And the course of action is really taken from the business motivation model, and it's used to express things like strategies and tactics. How are you go going to uh, employ your capabilities, your resources, to achieve these outcomes? That's basically what a course of action does. And we already see a number of capabilities here. Um, this is from a longer case story that I will use uh, later today um, from a, our uh, Arc Assurance example that most of you who are familiar with Archimate will know. We've extended that with this. Uh, this is part of their digital strategy, so they are developing new capabilities. And here we see that these capabilities together realize that strategy and realize these outcomes. Um, capabilities themselves, of course, have to be uh, realized by what the organization is and does and has. So there are resources related to these capabilities, and these are just well, simple examples. So we have social media competency as a resource needed for your digital channel management capability. And then you have your customer service team realizing that resource. So those are new concepts in the strategic world. And then you can draw things like capability maps. Um, this is Arc Insurance's uh, capability map, um, a typical insurance company, the typical capabilities you find in there. And so that's the, the, the work on the strategic level. Then we've added concepts for the physical world. Um, and those are really uh, closely integrated because we, for example, we didn't add any behavior concepts. So the work that's being done, we have a, a concept like technology process, but we don't have a physical process. It's just a technology process. So we have one set of concepts for describing the whole technology world, and the physical concepts are just going to be, uh, are just now a part of that. Um, so just to show you some examples, this is from a really physical world uh, example, a really physical production example. Here we see the production of uh, vehicle telematics appliances. Um, and we see that there's an assembly line uh, modeled as equipment in the new Archimed concepts. We see various materials going in there, like the pre-assembled circuit boards and others. Uh, we see that it's uh, the assembly line, that that is part of a manufacturing plant. And we see also that it's, uh, well, the, 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 the end product is then shipped uh, via overseas shipping and local trucking uh, using 
a distribution network concept which is also new in Archimedes. So for physical distribution, you can now model that with a distribution network, not just communication networks, but really physical stuff. So this is a really physical example, the, uh, uh, the production of stuff, but we'll sh see a more um, internet of things like example later on. Some other improvements to the language in a different area are that you can now draw some relationships to relationships. Not just anywhere, of course, because that will become really messy, but take, for example, on the left-hand side, you can now model that a certain object is really related to a flow between two business functions. So you can model that this insurance policy is actually the thing that flows. On the right-hand side, you can now model that a relationship is part of an architecture plateau. You couldn't do that in the previous version of Archimed, which was rather awkward because that's often something that changes between plateaus. You, you establish new relationships between application components in this case. So that was very important to add that as well. But like I said, this is not a, a generic feature that you can just use anywhere because then people would start drawing relationships to relationships to relationships. That would be really messy. But these are examples of where this is now permitted, which makes the language a lot more flexible and a lot more expressive. Um, another example is that the grouping concept in Archimate, which used to be just a graphical thing, now has an actual meaning. It has actual relationships with the stuff in the group. And you can draw relationships to and from a group. So the picture on the left and the picture on the right are really have the same meaning. You, you use aggregation there to picture what's in the group. And you can indeed express that all the stuff inside the group now together realizes a certain service. You don't have to draw all the individual relationships anymore. You can do it like this. So that's a lot more flexible, a lot more, but it, it saves you a lot of drawing uh, as well. So those are some of the highlights of what's new in the language. Uh, if you want to know the details, please come to the uh, Archimate track this afternoon. I'll uh, give an extensive presentation on what's uh, all new in there. And now I'll hand over to Ivor for the second half of our presentation. Thank you very much, Mark. Um, so yes, yeah, so, so I'm Ivor Band, and I've been using the Archimate language s almost every day, certainly every week for the last five or six years. In late 2010, I was working for a diversified financial services company, and I was researching methodologies. And when I saw how TOGAF and Archimate could work together, a light, a light really went on for me. And I said, wow, this really solves a problem. I understand why it solves the problem. I can really use this, and I can start using it right away. And, and since then, I've used it to model everything from office politics to salesforce.com implementations to complex stacks of uh, cloud-based software. And I really find that it's, um, it's, very, it's extremely useful. So, so what I'm going to talk. So now I work for a company called Cambia Health Solutions. I've been there for a little over two and a half years, and um, it's basically its roots are as a health insurer since 1917, and um, and it really is moving to become sort of a health technology platform company. And so now I'm involved in in big data and enabling, as we call it, everything as a service. And uh, so, so some of my examples. Um, um, Go, go from there. And so, so some opportunities we see at Cambia for Archimate 3 are capability-based planning, enterprise service-oriented architecture. I've done a lot of work already. We have lots and lots of service teams developing things, and, and, and how does all that work fit together? And I've used Archimate in modeling the service catalog that we're going to implement internally. Also, we're very, in, we have, like all insurance companies that have been around for a long time, we have multiple generations of health insurance applications and we have to do some rationalization to con control our costs and complexity. And I'm, I'm very interested also in supporting consistent development and op or optimal reuse of, of big data solutions. In fact, tomorrow on the, um, health, on the healthcare track, I will be giving a presentation modeling big data using Archimate 3.0. And, um, and there, I'm trying to, 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 to introduce in my company some conventions for talking about big data solutions based both on Archimate and the NIST big data reference architecture. So, so come to my presentation tomorrow on the healthcare track, and you'll hear more about that. And also, um, we're very interested in mobile health. If you go to YouTube and you look at Cambia Health Solutions, um, if you just Google it, you'll see you'll see videos of um, you, you'll see videos of uh, of our 
of our plans for the future, which include quite a lot of technology in the delivering of, a pers of healthcare in a personal and efficient fashion. So, so in this first picture, I, I talk about how a company can apply various resources to a particular course of action, which is offering claims processing as a service to other carriers. We see that the company has a claims capability that realizes it. And to that capability, we've assigned three essentially groups of resources and human resources. We have particular groups with particular skills. We have IT resources, a bunch of application collaborations or big solutions, groups of applications that work together, such as multi-tenant claims processing, all of which are based on a cloud-based infrastructure. And the company is also well positioned to do this through its partnerships, for, which include cloud services contracts and a claims processing contract with the former subsidiary. You know, in this case, the company is already providing services to a company that used to be part of it, but is no longer, and so it has a basis to provide those ser services to other companies, especially when, con when coupled with its existing cloud-based multi-tenant infrastructure and applications. So now I'm going to give a bit of a connected health case study here, and it's, and it's based, and it's based on, on work and planning I've done in integrating you know, a health insurance companies web presence with its um, with, with health platform providers and ultimately digital digital platform service providers so 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 there are, there, there are companies you know in, in the US and I'm sure elsewhere that that, that that provide white label label personal health insurance personal health and wellness websites and they do that to um, they do that they, and a lot of insurers, Health insurers now include them. Your, your, your group health insurer, if you have group health insurance, may include that on their website. And so, so here we have a situation. We have a company called WLPH, fictional, of course, that integrates with two types of connected health devices, one of which is manufactured in Germany. That comes in later. And, um, but, but, but they see that their competitors are integrating with a broad version of them. So, they, so, so, so consumers that use it don't have to use just one of the two. They can use any of them. And, you know, and these, these connected health devices include things like fit, everything from fitness trackers to the connected glucometers that people with challenge with diabetes are starting to um, use to um, connected scales, etc. And so, and what they're finding out is that they're large customers. They're the insurance companies, for instance, that they that that, that that use their platform for their groups and consumers are dissatisfied with this. And the sales staff report this as a key factor in low in cost deals. So, but 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 fortunately, we have digital health platforms, and what they do is they aggregate it. They integrate with every con, almost every conceivable. Um, device and provide an API and cloud-based services that let you get that information in a consistent stream. So first of all, here we're talking about, first of all, the consumers have to get a connected health device. And here shows an integration of the older parts of Archimate, which have to do with basically IT systems and solutions with the, and, and, and with the physical world. So you show a consumer at a ship to location, perhaps his or her home, who's using a website, um, you know, which is an interface which, to, to place an order. And, and that order placing service is realized by a fulfillment en engine, which is on a hosting infrastructure. And that fulfillment engine sends the order data over to a pick list generator at a distribution center. Of course, we're abstracting out probably some other stages that come here, but this is showing the concept. And then that pick list generator takes the pick list data and sends it to a printer. At, at which point we've already entered the physical world because we're showing that the um, that the pick list generator is hosted in a server room at the distribution center, and then the printer is sending is sending the pick list printout as a representation of that data to the packer who takes the order from the shelf, and then that connected health device goes by overnight delivery to the mailbox of the consumer. And it's also, but it's gotten to the distribution center via an intermodal freight path um, 
from, from, from a factory in Germany where it was created on an assembly line. So here you have the whole thing. And I've also shown some, um, some, some, so, 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 some, ne some networks, so, some different networks here at the bottom. And also, um, now here's another, here's a, now, now how are those devices managed? Here you have a health insurance website that includes a health and wellness subsite and, can, and, and includes some fit, health and fitness management pages provided by that platform. And there, there are some services available to manage the health and fitness device, for example. And, um, and, then, and, then, and, then, and then through there, the health, the health and fitness website accesses the digital health platform, which uses a bunch of other services from the health platform provider where, that allows it to retrieve the supported connected health device types, register those, et cetera. So we're actually going down. The other thing that's important about this diagram is I'm using the flow relationship between groupings, which is a new ArchiMate 3 feature. First of all, I'm allowed to have a relationship between a, a, an object and a relationship. And I'm also allowed to have groupings that have relationships. And I'm showing that in order to preserve confidentiality, there's only an OP consumer ID exchange between the digital health service platform provider and the health and wellness platform service layer. So you, you can show that you can show some, see some complexity here as well. And then if we move on, um, we, can, we, can, we can see the bottom of this, where, where the digital health service platform layer is um, accessing is, is, is accessing a further set of services that um, that allow it to manage the devices, and so there you see some of the infrastructure necessary to manage the devices, some of the applications, and finally, this is where I was actually trying to get to. Um, it shows that there's a that there's a whole infrastructure that supports that, including that process, including data exchange with the connected health device. And then, and you see, and you see the entire infrastructure in this picture. And so now, moving on to the concluding remarks, one of the things as a almost daily user of Archimate, the advantages I see from Archimate 3, and besides having worked on the standards, I've been using it for about a month, is that it, it enhances the, the visualization of complex models with the new strategy elements, as you can see, link strategy to architecture, the enhanced groupings, which allow you to have many to one relationships. My previous diagrams, what I'm showing is I'm showing relation, I showed relationships between groupings. My diagrams would have been a spaghetti mess if I had to show those relationships between all of the elements of the grouping but the relationships within the grouping are projected onto the, the individual relationships within the group. And the, the other thing is there's joint realization for multifaceted dependencies. Using the junction, I can show that many different components, many different more concrete components, go into realizing something more abstract. So a whole set of service servers can realize a whole set of services, for example. And um, there, now the notion of event has been extended to um, all, three, uh, all, th all three core layers, application, well, actually into application technology and to the implementation and migration, so that you have those events and if they've always been in the business layer. And, 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 and the, I, I actually used those in my uh, presentation on Tuesday. And another thing is good is we, in Archimate 2, we have business processes. Now we have application and technology processes, which are really great. The application processes are particularly useful, I think, in the big data arena, where, you're, where, where there's all this, this multi-stage processing. And I use that in my presentation tomorrow. And the, the improved, we have improved um, customization mechanisms um, which, 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 which is support for different categories of standard entities and relationships. You'll see that um, 
we, you'll, you'll see that we use, um, that I use stereotyping, for instance, extensively in my presentation tomorrow. And the whole notion of how to customize the language is better developed in the um, specification. And there's also the specification does a better job of documenting the viewpoint mechanism. And, and it really, I think, encourages the most complex, useful views of complex architectures. One thing that I thought of, the other thing that's good about Archimate 3 is it allows system software layers to realize each other. That may seem like a very technical point, but the, um, but, but the idea is that we're always dealing with complex stacks of system software where you have an operating system realizing a database management system. And then you may have a middleware layer that uses both operating system services and database management services. And it goes on and on, especially as you go into the complex stacks used for big data, as an example. So again, it's, it's just, a, it's just a, a much more complete and practical language today. So, so, so summarizing it, Archimate 3, all over, the business strategy is very important. The physical world is, is, is very important. And there, there's improved usability, consistency, and support for complex models. There's, you know, one of the things I didn't mention is that it also lets you cl clearly label what layer something is a part of because some of the symbols are the same on each layer. And so that was another important thing. And the definitions also are just better aligned with other standards. We did some work aligning it with TOGAF, for instance, as part of the Harmony project um, a few years ago now. And so it offers better, even greater support in dealing with digital transformation and business change. So here's where you can find um, information on the standard. And, uh, and there you go. Maybe to add to the, the, final, the final link uh, over there, if you can click one back. Okay. Um, we created a quick reference with all the concepts of Archimate. You can download it, load it from the bottom link, but you can also get a paper version at the uh, Busy Design booth. It's, it shows you the different concepts in context, so with uh, little symbols and how they are used uh, together with other symbols. So if you want to learn the language, it might come in handy. So I think that concludes our talk.